Welcome to Startup Sandbox. It's a pleasure to see all of you here this evening. I'm feeling a lot like a presenter at the Academy Awards. <laughs> there are so many people to thank. It's hot, 94 degrees in Santa Cruz today. People are standing. Thank you, appreciate you accommodating this. And the clock is ticking. But let me start. I'm Lou Pombianco. I'm co-founder and CEO of Startup Sandbox. Judy Owen is the co-founder of Startup Sandbox, my business partner, and now the general partner of the Natural Bridges Venture Fund that will support Startup Sandbox companies. And Mike Lund is the Sandbox COO and CFO and has come over from Silicon Valley to participate with us and provide his expertise. Thank you, Mike. So thank you all for being here tonight to celebrate six companies that have graduated from research and validation of their products to the commercial market. In under 18 months, what an outstanding achievement. So I want to acknowledge Chancellor Cynthia Larive, Executive Vice Chancellor Lori Kletzler, Victoria Slitkoff, the Head of Global Strategic Partnerships and Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Office of the President of the University of California, Scott Brandt, Vice Chancellor of the Office of Research and Industrial Alliances and Technology Commercialization, Dean Alexander Wolf, Dean of the Baskin School of Engineering, Dean Paul Koch of Physical and Biological Sciences, and a team of forward-thinking professors who have been working with me at the Sandbox for just about a year now to advance the next generation of translational science and precision medicine, leveraging the critical areas of competency at the University of California, Santa Cruz. David Hausler, David Diemer, Harry Noller, Todd Lowe, and Benedict Patton. Thank you all for the work you're doing. I hear the hook coming, but I do have a few more things to say. <laughs> there are so many people that have contributed to make this day possible. In March 2017, Scott Brandt and Mohammed Abu Salem asked my business partner Judy Owen and me if we would start a 501c3 and build an incubator affiliated with UC Santa Cruz. Startled and overwhelmed <laughs> by the ask, we went out and did due diligence. So we traveled to San Francisco, we met with Doug Crawford, who 15 years earlier had started QB3 at 953 Indiana Street. He said, Thomas Friedman was wrong. The world is not flat. There are only certain places where people want to do certain things. We know why they want to be at Mission Bay. UC San Francisco is a teaching hospital. People want to be here for life science. Then he looked at us and he said, I can't imagine why people would start a company in Santa Cruz. <laughs> the gall. He offered us in that two important lessons and a challenge. Thank you, Doug, for your challenge and continuing support and collaboration. And he has been incredibly generous with us. We took your challenge and discovered what many people are just beginning to realize. UC Santa Cruz is a world leader in genomics molecular RNA, bioinformatics, nanopore sequencing, chemistry, and biochemistry. And we've come to find out that people actually want to be in Santa Cruz. <laughs> so our theme is bioscience meets quality of life in Santa Cruz. Now people around the world are inquiring on our website. 
what do I need to do to start a company at the sandbox? So, to Mayor Martine Watkins, who's here this evening, former Mayor Hillary Bryant, Economic Development Director for the City of Santa Cruz, Bonnie Lipscomb, Susan True, CEO Community Foundation Santa Cruz, the Supervisors, Seal Cirillo, Chair of the Sutter Health Palo Alto Medical Foundation, and so many more. Thank you for supporting the evolution of Santa Cruz to a world-leading bioscience center. The foundation is laid and companies are thriving here on the west side of Santa Cruz. Last year, Judy and I opened the role of founders to our network of technology executives, biotech executives, venture capitalists, and community leaders. The Founders Circle was born. Thank you, Founders Circle members who are here this evening for your monetary contribution to Startup Sandbox and for the mentoring that you provide to member companies to assist us in accelerating these entrepreneurs into commercial success. For Sounder, Founder Circle member David Macarishian, thank you and O'Melveny for your pro bono service to Startup Sandbox. For Jeff Capaccio, thank you and Car Farrell for your pro bono service to Startup Sandbox. To the US, to the UC Santa Cruz team of Barry Holmes Nazario, Lilia Sandoval, Ann Pace, and Alireza Shavash, thank you. Thank you for working with us in the early days to make Sandbox a reality. A special thanks to Helen Pastorino, who is a Founder Circle member and has engaged her company from Patria Real Estate Investment Firm to partner with us to make this event a reality. Helen, thank you so much. And thank Bert George for providing the fine Napa Valley wines that we're enjoying this evening. And thank Ahmed Hamdi for providing the delicious hors d'oeuvres served by Mal Mike Falco and the Alderwood team. We appreciate this very much. And thank you, Founder Circle member Bruce Mitchell, for re-architecting and branding the Startup Sandbox website. Bruce has a long history in marketing, going all the way back to the marketing director reporting to Larry Ellison at Oracle in the early days. We've been friends, collaborators, he's been a client, and we've enjoyed many successes. So thank you, Bruce. I'm now being pulled off the podium, <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> so I want to acknowledge two people. Scott Brandt, thank you for your vision, your tenacity to create an incubator for UC Santa Cruz and for your commitment to sustain the sandbox formula of success with funds from your very own budget. Thank you. And thank you, Executive Vice Chancellor Lori Klessler, for your belief in Startup Sandbox. We are, after all, a startup, and we know that startups can go off the rails. We're not. We're not. But with your belief in us, you provided additional funds from your budget to sustain Startup Sandbox. We are deeply appreciative. And now, it is my privilege and honor to introduce Vice Chancellor Scott Brandt. Thank you, Scott. Okay, thank you, Lou, and thank you everybody for being here today. This is kind of overwhelming. It's really fantastic to see this much support and energy <clears throat> around the Startup Sandbox. A little closer? To the mic. A little closer? Yeah. It sounds loud where I am. 
Um, as Lou mentioned, I'm UCSC's Vice Chancellor for Research. I'm also a Professor of Computer Science and Engineering. I'm just going to wait for you to finish. Good? Okay. Lisa just moved. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. I'm also a Professor of Computer Science and Engineering, and I've been at UC Santa Cruz for 21 years. Um, ten years I also spent 10 years before that in industry, um, and it was involved in many startups. Um, and sadly, uh, I have to report that the success of those startups was inversely proportional to my engagement in them. <laughs> what can I say? But uh, I learned a really important lesson, and that is if you want to do big things, you have to find outstanding people to work with, and there's a surplus of those people around here. Create the conditions necessary for them to succeed, mentor and support them as needed, and then get out of the way and let them do what they're so good at. And that's what we've done with the Startup Sandbox, and that's what the Startup Sandbox is doing for so many companies. When I started as Vice Chancellor, I was directed to transform UC's Office of Research into a positive, proactive office that actively champions and develops the UCSC research enterprise, researchers, and innovators. One part of that mandate was to foster a rich innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in and around the university. My staff and I worked aggressively to achieve that goal, and uh, one piece of that was cr creating an Office of Industry Alliances and Technology Commercialization that manages IP and licensing, actively builds relationships with industry and champions our inventors and entrepreneurs to create new IP and transfer their ideas to the world. And a key element of that was fostering the development of new companies and industries around UCSC technology. Startup Sandbox was an integral part of that plan to achieve that goal. One of our early successes was a $2.2 million grant from the state as part of a $22 million grant to the UC system, specifically to support innovation and entrepreneurship and economic development. Leveraging those funds, we built something we called Splice, which was a comprehensive program around innovation and entrepreneurship on and outside the campus. Uh, that included investment in Santa Cruz economic development via Startup Sandbox and Santa Cruz Works. It included a Silicon Valley incubator targeting companies with relationships with UC and other UC campuses, an entrepreneurial training program for UCSC students, an entrepreneurship-focused internship program for students in the arts, an entrepreneurship grants program for students in the humanities, or excuse me, researchers in humanities and the social sciences, an arts-oriented game design program designed to bring new voices and new perspectives into the game development world, and small commercialization grants to help UCSC inventors get their ideas off the ground. Startup Sandbox itself is the result of years of strategizing and planning. It started with the recognition that our own startups building upon our world-class innovations in RNA, genomics, bioinformatics, nanopore technology, and chemistry and biochemistry had no satisfactory home in Santa Cruz. This represented a huge need for us and a remarkable opportunity for the university and the community to leverage UCSC's academic innovation to create a rich ecosystem of related companies, creating economic opportunity for local entrepreneurs and the community and potentially seeding whole new industries around UCSC technology. And I think we're starting to see some of that already. Um, our goal was to provide entrepreneurs with the environment to leverage UCSC's research excellence to cost-effectively incubate IP and launch companies with benefits to the investors, the university, and the community. And our strategy was just what I outlined above. Find the very best people, create the conditions for them to succeed, support them as needed, and get out of the way. Um, fortunately, as with the other st uh, startups that I've benignly ne neglected, Startup Sandbox has succeeded magnificently, and that's why we're here today. Um, it's the first wet lab incubator in Santa Cruz and the surrounding area, and an incredible asset to the university and the community. Its state-of-the-art equipment and remarkable affordability are unique and create an environment for biotech entrepreneurs to flourish. UCSC and Santa Cruz have an abundance of diverse, progressive innovators that can now stay here, right in the home of their inspiration, to grow their ideas, stay connected to the university and the community, build their businesses and workforce, and achieve their dreams. So, Startup Sandbox has now served, I believe, 23 startups. It's been linked to dozens of local well-paid jobs. It hosts UCSC's graduate internship program for industry careers, and this is only the beginning. So ton tonight is a really important celebration in a number of different ways. We're here to celebrate the success of Startup Sandbox 
And after only 18 months in operation, the exit of six extraordinary biotech uh, companies as they move on to the next big step to, of success. Those companies are Aeroasis, which is at the forefront of controlled environment agriculture using Internet of Things technologies and hydroponic smart gardening techniques. Claret Bio, um, innovating next generation sequencing methods to capture and retain native ends of DNA fragments, significantly enhancing biological discovery. Cruise Foam, which has developed marine biofoam technology as a state sustainable biodegradable foam replacement for current polystyrene and polyurethane structural foams. Dimensional bioceramics, whose precision bone graft substitutes are used to fill gaps in bone structure due to injury or illness until the substitute is resorbed and replaced with real bone during healing. Almost done. Prime Genomics, founded by experts in genomics and molecular diagnostics. Um, Prime Genomics is developing a breakthrough approach for cancer screening. And Unnatural Products whose platform accelerates drug discovery by harnessing insights from nature to intelligently design and rapidly optimize macrocyclic compounds that will guide the next generation of therapeutics. And I don't know what most of those words mean, but <laughs> I, I think I pronounced them correctly. Fortunately, our chancellor can tell me what those words all mean. I do have to report that... Please. Yep. Yeah. I do have to report that Kelly from Claret Bio just told me that they've received their first invoices today. Thank you. So yeah, congratulations, that's really fantastic. So altogether, these companies that are exiting the sandbox have leased 25,000 square feet of new space, 20,000 of that in Santa Cruz, and raised more than $15 million in Series A funding. That's an extraordinary success. It's, it's really an incredible success in very little time, and we wish them all the best as they move on to the next step in their journey. Their success also represents years of planning and uh, development by many, notably Lou Pombianco, Judy Owen, and Mike Lynch. Sorry, Mike Lund. Somehow this uh, autocorrect got me. Um, <laughs> who've poured so much of themselves into Startup Sandbox and many incremental steps toward the vision that has become the Sandbox. These six companies build upon and celebrate all of that hard work by so many leading up to the sandbox that allowed those companies and hopefully many more in the future to make the leap from idea to product and their own magnificent successes. So thank you and congratulations everybody. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Victoria Slivkov, um, to Santa Cruz and to the sandbox. Victoria, as was mentioned, heads innovation and entrepreneurship for the UC system. She coordinates across the system to empower greater collaboration with industry to commercialize, commercialize UC innovations and scale the growth of UC startups. Prior to coming to UC, she spent over two decades in the corporate world as an investor, business operator, management consultant, and entrepreneur. She's experienced in forming public-private partnerships to drive investment and adoption of nascent technologies in over 20 countries across the globe. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. A little more than two years ago, I came down to visit and met Lou, Mike, and Judy for the very first time. At that time, you had just acquired this space, and I was one of the first ones to see this. You share your vision for building a world-leading bioscience incubator in Santa Cruz and walk me through a rough blueprint of how you were gonna get there. We tour around the building and walk through spaces that would later become workstations, meeting rooms, and a wet lab where tech leaders, innovators, and world-changing entrepreneurs collaborate to birth new ventures. Fast forward two years later, the team at Startup Sandbox has not only delivered, but exceeded expectation. We're here to celebrate the graduation of six exciting new startup companies poised to deliver breakthroughs through, with global impact. These startups are expanding to over 25,000 square feet of commercial spaces combined, and as Scott mentioned, in aggregate have raised over $50 million in venture capital funding. This is no small fee. 
Lou, Mike, Judy, and the team, you are quite the entrepreneurs yourself. As a, as a large public research university system, UC is a field of ideas, dreams, inventions, and commercial opportunities. These ideas and opportunities serve the public interest, furthering the education, research, and public service missions of the university by helping to translate research into a wide array of products and services that can benefit our daily lives. UC has a rich history in innovation entrepreneurship, having helped launch iconic industries and businesses in California in fields of um, semicon, biotech, digital media, and aerospace. We have served as a powerful engine in making California a global leader in innovation. Innovation and entrepreneurship are thriving on the campuses in their own unique ways as the startup culture is now deeply embedded into the fabric of our uh, campus communities. By orchestrating a coordinated effort to move research and discovery to the marketplace, UC can strengthen its position as a leading university system for innovation and entrepreneurship. My Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Unit at the, UC, uh, at the Office of the President supports the campuses in this endeavor. We provide resources and expertise as part of the system-wide connected tissue that links the campuses with industry, investors, philanthropists, and policymakers to advance our endeavor. UC's entrepreneurs, campuses, and industry partners are key stakeholders we serve by providing increased access to funding, partnerships, mentorship, potential customers, and new sources of talent. Serving as a conduit for external partners not currently engaged with UC or those that seek a multi-campus initiative. Enhanced system-wide coordination so best practices and opportunities can be shared and leveraged. And more cross-campus engagement of alumni entrepreneurs so they can give back to their alma maters. Our goal for supporting the innovation ecosystem is on the campuses is to accelerate startup formation and traction, increase tech commercialization through culture and incentives, encourage and foster business formation from researchers, students, alumni, and positively impact regional economies and nation and the world. Our effort in successfully championing state funding towards UC's INE gave birth to new proof of concept grants, entrepreneurial programs, and created new incubators and accelerators such as the Startup Sandbox. The success of Startup Sandbox not only speaks to Lou, Mike, and Judy's awesomeness as entrepreneurs, but also the leadership and vision of Chancellor Lurie, Executive Vice Chancellor Lori Klessler, and Vice Chancellor for Research, um, Scott Brandt, and the entire leadership team for supporting this effective vehicle for research translation. Start of Sandbox is truly a model for public-private partnership to take great ideas developed on the campuses towards commercialization. And to all of you, the success of Startup Sandbox also speaks to the strength of, your, of this community um, as it truly takes a village to achieve what we're seeing here today. I am humbled to be in the position to support the wonderful work my, co uh, my colleagues are doing across the campuses. And I continue to be a friend and a fan of all of you are doing here. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. It's now my very great pleasure to welcome Dr. Cynthia Larive, who recently joined UCSC as our 11th chancellor. Cindy is herself, OK, go ahead, clap. It's an appropriate moment. <laughs> Cindy is herself an extremely accomplished bioanalytical chemist. She came to UC Santa Cruz from UC Riverside, where she was campus provost and executive vice chancellor. She's a first generation college graduate holds a bachelor's from South Dakota State, a master's from Purdue, Purdue, both in chemistry, and a PhD in analytical chemistry from UC Riverside. So a long time uh, UC member, both as a student and as an administrator, and a faculty member. Before Riverside, she was a chemistry professor at the University of Kansas. She has long demonstrated deep commitment to student success, inclusion, and equity. And she lives in Santa Cruz with her husband, Jim, and has two adult daughters. So. Welcome.
Thank you, Scott. So great to see everybody here tonight. What a joyous occasion. So as chancellor, I know a little bit about graduations, and I'm so thrilled for our six companies who are graduating from Startup Sandbox. But I also know that while graduation is in a way an ending, it's also a huge new beginning. And I'm so excited to see uh, all that these companies will accomplish. I wanted to just uh, talk for a couple minutes about UC Santa Cruz. You know we are first and foremost a research university. We also have an important mission uh, that's educating our students from the people of California. And as chancellors, you know, we, uh, we elbow a little bit. We worry about rankings. And, and um, you might have seen in the most recent US News and World Report rankings, UC Santa Cruz was number four public university in the United States, number 34. And, and, um, <laughs> but, but we got, we got, we got momentum. <laughs> but, but, but in a new ranking for the contributions of universities to social mobility, in terms of graduating students who are from the lowest income families and who receive Pell Grants, UC Santa Cruz was number two in the United States. Just, just to help you understand that, what that means, we graduated more Pell Grant students than Harvard, Brown, Columbia, Yale, and Princeton all put together. That's huge politic, uh, huge uh, human capital, and, and it is those students who are in our research labs, who are going on to become our graduate students, that are the drivers of the California economy. So as we think about that research, just a week ago, many of us were across the street over in our new West Side Research Park building celebrating our Genomics Institute and their residency as the cornerstone tenant of that building. Our Genomics Institute, you know, has contributed hugely to the sequencing of the human genome and now is leading translational research at UC Santa Cruz around new developments for cancer, understanding the, uh, the way that organisms may be changing over due to climate change, becoming extinct. But that's just one of the highlights of interdisciplinary research at UC Santa Cruz. We have departments of chemistry and biochemistry, molecular biology, bioengineering, which there's great uh, emphasis on research, interdisciplinary research, and from that research coming new ideas and developing the new entrepreneurs that will help to drive our local economy. I also just wanted to mention that um, this is so important for not just the university, but for our city. So having uh, the scale up of companies to be able to drive the Santa Cruz local and regional economy with cl clean jobs, good jobs, and ways that we keep our intellectual capital here in Santa Cruz is so important. So congratulations to the Startup Sandbox and to the graduating companies tonight. All right, so it's, it's my honor to introduce our final speaker, David Hausler. And actually, David may not need any introduction. Um, <laughs> his, but I'll do it anyways. Um, Dave, David's contributions to science and humanity are history in the making. David is a distinguished pro professor of biomolecular engineering at UC Santa Cruz. He holds the distinction, I think, of being the first and maybe only computer scientist named a Howard Hughes Medical Fellow. First, yes. Okay. Oh, there's more? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, maybe, okay. maybe the only one. I, I, I think never, the only I never, one. I never looked at that. Stuff. Okay, last time I looked, he was the only one. Um, he's scientific director of our Genomics Institute, which was newly founded as a, an organized research unit within the university, which is uh, utterly uninteresting bureaucratic detail, but, but, but it makes it official. And, of course, he assembled the first full sequence of the human genome. Wow. 
since then, he and his staff have made impact in remarkable ways via their genome browser activities, pioneering work in cancer genomics and precision medicine, among many others. And there's one more accomplishment for which I'm personally grateful. Um, when I interviewed at UC Santa Cruz 20, I guess 22 years ago, I, I had a great interview. They hired me. I was very happy. And then shortly after that, somebody said, you know why you were interviewed? I said, no, I don't know. Why was I interviewed? And they said, because you came from the same program as David Hausler. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he's so incredible. They thought, well, we should at least talk to this guy. He might be good. <laughs> so here I am, and thank you so much, David. <laughs> Thanks so much, and, and I, I really just want to thank everybody at Santa Cruz for giving me the opportunities of my life. Um, I've been here for 35 years and uh, grown up with Santa Cruz, and it, it's been an incredible ride. Uh, I'm here, and we're all here, I think, because we believe in Santa Cruz. We believe in the University of California at Santa Cruz. And I always try to think about what what is so special about us, and I think we we are, there's a, there's a certain renegade spirit here that is amazing. And, and I think that makes for good entrepreneurs. We are not cookie cutters out of the standard mold. We definitely challenge everything and we come up with radical new ideas and surprise the hell out of people. Uh, thanks so much, Scott, for, for talking about the human genome, but this, you know, Really, uh, it was the work of a graduate student, Jim Kent, at the time, who pieced together all of the pieces of the DNA when the public human genome project couldn't do it. And they were in this race with Solera, a, a private company, as you, as you remember. They'd made a deal um, with President Clinton that they would both announce the first draft of the human genome on June uh, 26th, 2000, and we first heard about that, who were in the trenches working on the Human Genome Project, on May 9th. We were, <laughs> Francis, no, I seriously, this is a serious story. Francis Collins got on our weekly call and said, well, I made a deal with Solera, and we're going to announce that we're, we have the first draft of the genome in the White House on June 26th. And we all said, are you crazy? We don't have the first draft of the human genome. What are you bargaining with? And it was Jim Kent who stepped up and put all the pieces together and made it happen. And that's a legend now. I mean, he's, he's legendary here at Santa Cruz. And, and because of that act, which, you know, he did this on, on, uh, on 200 Dell laptops with Pentium 3 you know, processors that we hastily put together compared to Solera's amazing supercomputer. And, and because he did that, we were, uh, we were invited to post the genome on the internet. So this is the f moment when humanity saw its own genetic recipe for the first time passed down to us through billions of years of evolution. And, it, it, it's a huge honor to be at a place that, that just came out of nowhere and did something like this. And it isn't the only thing we've done. You know, we've, there are many, many amazing things that have happened at Santa Cruz because people weren't shackled by the traditional way of thinking about things and just said, what the hell? And brilliant, brilliant people at Santa Cruz. And, and that's why the pipeline for entrepreneurs will be so rich and it will continue to be rich because people with passion and with unique ideas and a love of Santa Cruz, that's a great recipe for a rich entrepreneurial environment. And I've been looking out at the vacant lots here and wondering what the when are people going to wake up, right, and see what this incredible opportunity is and start supporting companies here. And I've been talking with Santa Cruz for a long time, and all of the officials I talk to are extremely excited that we might be able to do something here that's not just making money, but is doing something for the world that makes a difference. It's clean technology that is making a difference because the future of this world is 
up in the air at this point. Technology is moving so fast and there is so much happening that in a sense it's our duty to think about it, to do all we can and start companies that will make a difference. And if you look at the companies that we've started from Santa Cruz, they are all companies that you would be extremely proud of to have in your backyard. And Santa Cruz is proud of those. And I think when we get the, you know, when we get the momentum going, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have many, many more companies that we can start. Uh, in particular, there are, there, you know, Island Conservation is a great company here thinking about the future of life on the planet. There are plenty of other opportunities for that. Um, we have brilliant leaders like Beth Shapiro, for example, who's a complete visionary when it comes down to thinking about the future and life on this planet in the future and how we can preserve it, understand it. We have Ed Green, you know, who spun off several companies already and now is thinking about forensics. We, I, I don't know whether some of you had a chance to, to hear Ed talk about that in the opening. Yeah, I mean, he's, catch, he's catching serial killers now. And again, out of nowhere, he just decided, oh, I'm going to catch some serial killers, right? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, so we, we have these exceptionally creative people. And I, it, I, I'm sorry I can't give the whole list here. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. But, uh, you know, all of these things are special things that we have at Santa Cruz, which is a vitality, an energy, a creativity that is extraordinary. Part of it, I, get, I would also say, is because we work together across disciplinary boundaries like I've never seen in any other institution, which is one of the reasons I never wanted to leave Santa Cruz, because I deeply, deeply appreciate my colleagues in all of the disciplines, and we're very happy at the Genomics Institute to be working with colleagues at all five divisions on campus. Because if you think about it from a social sciences and humanities point of view, genomics is a huge issue in our future. We are all filled with little fragments of DNA that have come down from our ancestors. And now we're talking about genome privacy and do you own your own genome and should pharma pay for our genomes and so forth. And it's a crazy thing. And then maybe you've heard recently um, we were just awarded uh, the lead on a $30 million project to sequence not just one reference genome, but to go back and sequence 350 reference genomes from all ethnicities across the planet. Because you can't have a fair and equitable and just medicine if everybody is mapped to the one reference genome. So. That's a new project that, that is great. It's so Santa Cruz. It, it, it just, you know, it's us. It's our spirit. Uh, I, I'm incredibly excited to be here. I'm incredibly excited to be a part of trying to realize, to see Santa Cruz realize its exceptional potential, and I know there is so, so much more to come. I want to thank Lou for creating this opportunity, uh, and Judy, um, this was amazing, right? That you that you just put aside everything and agreed to take on this task when people in San Francisco doubted you so much, right? Um, but damn it, you know we've proved them wrong before, right? We've surprised them before, and we will continue to surprise them. Thanks for inviting me here. So just a, a quick few words, because there's something that David said that resonates, and I'll tell you who it resonated with in just a moment. Jeff Capaccio securitously introduced me to uh, the Consul General of Italy, and I attended a uh, book signing by uh, Federico Fagin. Federico Fagin has been <coughs> uh, credited with being the individual who uh, first did the commercial microprocessor. So the Consul General said, Lou, I want you to ask him a question. <laughs> so <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> so I asked him a question. I said, first, I need to say something, and then I'll ask you the question. I said, what I want to say to you is, 
The University of California at Santa Cruz is leading the way in critical areas that may be important to you. And Startup Sandbox is an incubator, which is incubating companies coming out of the university and, and other places. Now my question, will you come to the University of California at Santa Cruz and to Startup Sandbox? He put his hand on his heart and he said, the University of California, Santa Cruz is in my heart. And then he said, and this echoes what you said, he said to me, the University of California at Santa Cruz has professors that dare to ask the questions that others won't ask. <laughs> and yes, I will come. And he has started the Frederico and, and Elva Fagin Foundation for Consciousness. And he emailed me, he's on a book tour. He, wrote, he just finished his biography, uh, Silicio, Silicon. He's on a speaking tour across Italy right now. And he emailed me and said, would you be available to have lunch December 3rd? <laughs> Made my day. <laughs> so we will have lunch and, and, and certainly we will introduce our group of professors that we've been working with to begin to carve out a path for how do we at UC Santa Cruz move down this path of unsolved mysteries of consciousness. This is going to happen. We need more space. We're getting more companies. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dean Wolf. Thank you, Todd Lowe. Thank you, Paul Koch. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a marvelous journey. I would ask you, please, meet some of the wonderful entrepreneurs who have graduated. Engage in a conversation. We have docents who will introduce you to them. Have some more wonderful food and wine. Stay, listen to harp music. We're so happy that you're all here. Thank you.